16. 16. So when, when you when you talk to um, uh, Adal, you you get this impression that what you kind of your general impression of him is that he's a little high stress, a little high strung, um, and this might be what is not. He's been in this pit for a while. You can tell. He's been down here, kind of middle management, if you will. <laughs> and um, you know, you, if you're a wizard, you don't need middle management. You're, you're an overqualified manager. And uh, he um, he seems like he's a little wants to get out of here, but he seems like he's not able to. So far as like poking and prodding for like actual um, like physical exits, you're realizing that, that it might be easier to get one of these more egotistical guys to succumb to your plans. Does that make sense? So we should try and convince some of these middle, one of these middle managers. Yeah, they, they seem, he seems to have a lot of um, uh, aspirations. Like he, he wants to get higher up in the organization, but he's not getting higher in the organizations. Is that? Um, uh, Michael, give, give me a quick history of, of uh, Tyrolis. I'm kind of curious, like, uh, there's a lot of rumors about this character in the, um, in the pit, um, in terms of his, his capacity in the arena. How long has he been here? What's, what's his deal? Was he born here? I feel like, yeah, he was born here, you know, um, either his, uh, his clan or tribe of centaurs were captured a while ago. He, he doesn't know a life outside the pit. Um, He's, it's like he's dissatisfied, but at, at the same time, he probably has a sort of a decent life for what it can be, being just fighting every he, day, right? He is treated a, uh, a, a bit better than the other prisoners. Mostly. Yeah. Um, he is given bigger rations. Um, he's not required to work, actually. Um, largely from what you've gathered, most of the other centaurs died of overexhaustion, overexertion. Um, mm -hmm. They knew that they were heavy workers and they could move stuff rapidly, but largely were worked to death. Yeah. Okay. But yeah, so, so I feel like that's a part of a resentment that builds in him, knowing that, you know, like knowing, watching his probably his ancestors and family die over the years. And he's sort of, it's, yeah, it's sort of like purposeless, but he's, he's just fighting. He's taking out all his anger right now on just opponents and trouncing people. <laughs> until he finds a reason of hope, you know, or if met anybody of, of sort of like an enemy worth noble enough that he doesn't direct his anger towards or whatever, you know, to have hope. And the only other question is, how does he wear jeans? All right. Uh, <laughs> yeah. One hoof at a time. One hoof at a time. Yeah. Look like leg warmers. I just don't get this. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> um, okay. I mean, <laughs> I think it was like, I think that's the one that's super fashion forward. That <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so um, the week passes. Uh, people are actually kind of excited. The idea of Zogchen and and uh, Tyrolus going at it. Some people are really intrigued by this. This the idea of this being like a combat of this being an event. Um, there is bets placed. Um, there's uh, some sort of um, definitely uh, some people kind of resent that in such a short time Zog chance getting to get a shot at the champion, um, <laughs> you know. But he, but he, he's come up quick. Um, Zog chance don't give a fuck. Zog chance don't give a fuck. Or... Don't give a fuck. I, 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 the honey me. badger of our group. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, he's a, he's a honey badger. That, that's his. That's his nickname, the Honey Badger of the Pit. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> um. So, uh, Zogchen, you, you, as you, the arena is largely. Uh, you've earned a few scars since, since your time here, but uh, they, they've all kind of covered up, uh, or kind of grown back together, if you will. Mm -hmm. um, you uh, managed to. Uh, make it through the week, obviously, but then also they kind of start setting you up. Um, do you have any kind of requests from them regarding this thing? Like, do you, like, you know that, that Tyrolis fights with a trident and net? Mm. 
Do you mean Will? Weapon? What's or... that? Sorry. Do you mean, you mean weapon-wise do I have sure. requests? Uh, hmm. So here's the thing. My assumption is since I'm trying to work my way out, I'm using this as an advantage to somehow you know, I don't care about winning or losing this fight. I'm just trying to get something, right? So I'm trying to think of, of something that would be would be good to get the fuck out of here. Um, Weapon-wise, I ask for, uh, I don't know, I'm, I'm a monk, so it's got to be something kind of martial. I would say some sort of staff. Yeah, both staff, that would be a problem. Yeah. And uh, I, would, I would like, uh, regardless of... Uh, of the outcome of the fight, uh, I would like me and some of my compatriots to to have a, a nice bed and and food or whatever for the night before and the day after. They um they they actually willing to uh, accommodate that and they actually give you quarters in the arena. Okay, you are under guard. There is guards there. Is that it'd be hard to exit. But you sure. certainly do have um, uh, quarters at night with actual beds versus like what amounts to shelves with, you know, something on. Yeah. Uh, Me too. I'm included in this. Well, I don't know. That's, that's, yeah. <laughs> okay. It doesn't have that many friends. Yeah. I guess I would, our initial discussion would be like, so tell me again how you're a fucking monk. <laughs> Good question. That would be a lot of the conversation. Didn't we, didn't we establish? Are you sure you're a monk? Yeah. Was it the? Was it a temple, or was it? It was a. It was a temple outside of the Duogar the Duogar area, right? It was like they. Um, I think it was what we said that you could have took a pilgrimage or something. Was it a temple? Of yeah, yeah, yeah. That seems to be I'm, all. I'm the... Go ahead. I'm sorry. Well, I said, is it a temple of ass whooping? Because that seems to be all that you do here. Basically. Uh, I mean, I'm just, I'm doing a little, I'm doing a little 36 chambers here. So I would I'm appreciate that di dichotomy. That would be awesome. <laughs> yeah. I'm into it. Okay. But yeah, so I guess I'm there too. Um, yeah, the, the, um, uh, th this idea of the temple is like, I think, I think we established it's a Shinnok temple. It was like an elven, um, focus. Yeah, yeah. It was, it was definitely foreign to your character, like foreign to your, your character's upbringing. Yeah, it was very anti-dwarven. Yeah. But um, you, my, you did my... learn, there, there's a lesson that you learned in that temple that has stuck with you, and it is that the only true demonstration of force is the excess of force. Hell yeah. Yeah. So that, that's... that's it. My murder hobo lifestyle. Yeah. Again, that would, I, my character would appreciate that. That's why we became friends. I want to. I want to say that might be Nietzsche, that might be Nietzsche, but okay. Um. <laughs> I, think <it's> <laughs> I think I'd be the whole time. He'd just be like, "I don't understand it, but I'm in." Okay. <laughs> so um, the uh, you you kind of you kind of uh, you you kind of been sharing some of his lessons with some people. You got a few people. I don't say they're disciples, but they're intrigued. They want to subscribe yeah. to your newsletter, you know. Um, <laughs> they got you. Get you. They'll take the pamphlet if you put your hand. If you put it out. Um, if I have, well, I'll just borrow some some of that ass paper that uh, the ass paper <laughs> was uh, given out to everybody. Yeah. <laughs> um, so you uh, you managed to um, procure uh, accommodations for uh, Noravar and yourself at least. Um, and and such. Um, the day comes about, and you guys eat well. Surprisingly, you have a little extra wrap, a little bit extra time, a little bit more food. Um, it's not great food, but it's there. Um, but the day of the fight, uh, a lot of people come out for it. It's uh, you know it, the arena is fairly packed. The arena doesn't sit like all, it doesn't sit like thousands. It's maybe like maybe like eight hundred, nine hundred. But um, largely what is actually, a lot of it is there's some of the guards, some of the, the wizards. Um, but of note during this time, actually, is that um, Jarzok is present, the, the head lich. It's, it's sitting there. And you have seen him right here before in the distance, but he doesn't come out too often. Wow. Look at this little, mur little mini murder monk. Everyone's coming out to see you. <laughs> All right, baby. <laughs> 
I was thinking, I, I keep on thinking they're freaking, uh, I don't know if you guys watch ECW, but Rob Van Dam, the whole damn show. <laughs> all I can think of. <laughs> um, but, uh, okay. So, um, there, there's kind of, you know, there's some fights. There, there's some fights in the day and stuff like that. And they kind of go back and forth. Um, it's crowd cheers, crowd booze. They go through the motions. But eventually the main event comes up. And Terrorless, you are marched out, trotted out, if you will. Uh, <laughs> yeah, exactly. And, and you you come out to the people screaming for you. Well, tell me, yes. tell me about your, your kind of coming out of this. So, and the, the arena is kind of set up. It, it's it's pretty good size. It's maybe like um, 150 feet in diameter. Mm -hmm. So you, you can get some pretty good distance in there if you need to run around or whatever it is. But. Yeah, oh, yeah. I definitely make a you know, full – Full couple trots. I mean, okay. am I excited? But kind of like, you know, I'm surprised by the crowd size. So I'm like, mm -hmm. okay, maybe today's a different day where, you know, the opponent, I just don't trounce. Maybe I'll have to use a weapon today, and um, kind of go around and, you know, yeah, pump it, pump the crowd up, get on okay. the floors a little bit. All right, yeah, you go up and you give a rear up and a big, big <laughs> yeah. battle roar. I'll be right back. Sure, dude. I'm gonna do that. Yeah, thing. you don't you don't matter in this scene. So go away. I know. <laughs> don't have to drive at home, Jesus. <laughs> <laughs> um, so yeah, okay. So you go up and you give the crowd what they want. Um, it's an it's an impressive thing. Go ahead and make a um, if you could uh, make yeah. a performance check for me. Okay. Yeah, and I'll I'll urinate, you know, that kind of thing. <laughs> really show your presence. Yeah. To start peeing. Okay, performance. Okay. All right. Ooh. Okay. Seventeen. Seventeen. Okay, that's pretty good. So yeah, you you go up and you you raise the roof. Uh, the crowd's definitely um, giving you their blessing so far. Um. So for on both, um, you will get a bonus D four on your initiative check. Uh, okay. For your next initiative check, and you'll get a bonus D four uh, on attack rolls during your first turn. Okay. You feel pretty good. Um, Zog Chen, yep. you have, um, been told, the, the guard's like, get out there. Okay. All right. So you walk uh, out. So am I, am I present while he's doing all the dressage? You, you can kind of see it in the distance through the, you can see it through like the gate. Yeah. So, uh. The whole time it's going on, I'm just it's kind of like a like an eye roll. Yeah. <laughs> I'm not, uh, and then once he's done all that, uh, I just whip it out and start peeing too. <laughs> okay. All right. Both yeah. hands. Uh, <laughs> I'm like I kind of it catches my attention. I'm like, oh. he, yeah, he, yeah, he. I've been holding it for a whole day. <laughs> he, uh, yeah, he, he, no, he, he showed you why dwarfs are so short. Uh, <laughs> uh, so he uh, he goes out there and, and he does a display too, and you kind of eye roll. And you're like, "Is this? I I didn't re I didn't realize your nation was the prerequisite of being a champion. Um, <laughs> you know, is this a qualification I need?" And you, you go up there and you make a mess, and everyone's kind of like. What the hell is this guy doing? And, <laughs> we we expected that from the horse. Yeah, yeah, yeah it makes a lot more sense. You have a huge puddle. <laughs> yeah, there's this, yeah, there's this, there's this humanoid cocktail now. Yeah. Um, and so you guys kind of uh, throw throw down uh, in the sense of like this kind of thing. Um, everyone is kind of like they they see there's a few people that, in the audience like they're like dedicated zog heads we'll call them, um, <laughs> and. Uh, uh, watch this. Jerry's gonna start a do no bent on Zoghead. Uh, <laughs> and uh, double check too, that team's not there though. What's that? I gotta double check on uh, Encyclopedia Metallion to see if yeah, there's Zoghead. Yeah, nice. So, um, it's um, it's black and dwarf doom metal, All right? Uh, <laughs> <laughs> um so you, you go ahead and, and uh, you kind of walk out there and you, you piss and you kind of look around and everyone's kind of like, is he going to do something else? <laughs> but uh, you don't. And But every but, but the fans, the Zoghids know it's going to be a good show. It's going to be a good show. 
So you guys are kind of put, you guys kind of know the marks. You have to be kind of across and they're moving up from each other and such like that. And there's kind of an announcer who goes on and, and kind of introduces um, Zogchen, Zogchen uh, talks about your martial art capabilities and, and he, you know, they refer to you as the Black Dwarf. Um, you're very distinct looking compared to like everyone else in the camp. Um, yeah. No one else is like, has obsidian skin is what it comes down to. Um, where Tyrolis is just has popularity. Mm -hmm. And uh, you, they kind of announce it. And um, at one point, um, Jarzok actually stands up and the announcer stops. And you can see this lich. Um, he's wearing purple robes. He has on his shoulder a pseudo dragon, kind of walking around his back and everything. Um, and you, you don't see his hands, but you can see the bottom of his jaw. And it is very bony. There's a little bit of flesh on it still, but like you could think maybe it's someone that's like got re like really bad hygiene and like really bad, like, like they've had some stuff eat away their flesh, but he is definitely, um, and he even has a little bit of a beard left. There's still a little bit of hair kind of holding on there. Um, you can tell it's the, the scraps of a, the, the scraps and ruins of a great empire of a beard at one point. But <laughs> it's, still, it's still holding on in some regards. Um, and he stands up and he proceeds to pull his, his um, dark and red hood back. Um, and you guys can see the skeletal face. Um, and even though you guys are far away from it, 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 the visage jumps out at you from the arena. And you, you can see, like even from afar, you can see the details of this, of this face of death. He begins speaking, and you can't hear initially, but like eventually, it's kind of amplified. Everybody kind of listens in closely, and all of a sudden, it's like boom. You all, sir, and he kind of, it's just kind of like initially, it's just kind of like I'll, I'll do, I'm not going to do the booming voice. I, I think my wife's like kind of resting, but um, to get in trouble with her. But um, he said he says um, today we all strive. We all set forth for the benefit of the great Zosh. And if it, oh, his vision, his vision is everything. It both watches us and knows all, but it also looks forward to the greatness of the Vol Empire, to the greatness of Zosh. And we are and I am happy to say that all of you have enabled that vision. And some of the crowds kind of like, everyone just, everyone in the crowd just knows to shut the fuck up and let this guy talk. Um, his, some of the guards kind of like, you do see someone kind of scoff at one point and you see the guards kind of haul him off like he's at a Trump rally wearing a Black Lives Matter shirt or some shit. <laughs> <laughs> like seriously, like seriously, um, it's um, they don't, you know, th there's definitely kind of a get in order, get in line type situation. Um, and Zosh is, is surrounded by several other wizards. You can tell um, about another half a dozen, um, along with they have a pretty thick amount of guards. Although you do suspect that they could take care of themselves if they needed to. However, the, of note is. Um, it is of note that uh, Adal is not next is not next to uh, Jarzak. Uh, <laughs> Adal is kind of put off in another in a different uh, grouping. Mm. He doesn't have as good as seats. Mm. Um, so eventually, uh, Jarzak, uh, as he stands there, he says, "Let the combat begin." And you guys are given the signal to engage. So, I'd like to have. Was I near the transfer when uh, the Lich was speaking? Was that? Was I near transfer? What, no, you're, you're kind of across the arena from each other in your starting positions, which is, is a chain. About anyone? Near me? What's up? Is there anyone near me? Why this is? Um, going there's on? a there's a guard at the gate about maybe about twenty feet from you. Yeah. Okay, never mind then. Yeah, sorry. No one's near you. Are you near right, something? Ignore me. Okay. Um, but he does give the, the signal to begin uh, the fight. 
So you two are standing there looking at each other. Uh, you, you you hear you hear the roar of the crowd. Um, are you guys ready? Oh yeah. yeah. All right. Give me give me an initial <laughs> roll. Each of you. All right. See who goes first. What am I doing? Where am I? You're in the you're in the, you're behind the gate watching the fight. So you, you kind of have like you're in the backstage area. You're kind of watching from the back backstage area. Okay. All right, you go first, Mike. Okay. <laughs> okay. So Michael, so oh, I got a one plus one. Wait, and then I get a D four. Let me, let me re roll that D four. So that, that's pretty. Yeah. Whew, you get told. Say, let me roll the D four here if it goes. This is an extremely <laughs> slow fight. Sorry. <laughs> yeah. Circling each other, waiting for an opening. Yeah. I don't rope a dope. <laughs> Sorry, my uh, contestants my circle hope. the ring. They're eyeing each other, sizing each other up for a good twenty minutes. Yeah. <laughs> All right, so I got a total of four. Oh my god, I go first. Oh wow. Perfect. I got, I got a six. <laughs> you got a six. That's amazing. I, I go for platform yeah. while they're uh, waiting for each other to go. <laughs> I've, been, I've been eyeing his puddle of piss. The whole time, just being like, "Damn, yeah, that, that's that stench." Was, it, it, you start, you get ready to charge in the stench of Gistia. Yeah. Oh, you're um, foul. You're foul. But uh, what would you would you get, Michael? Uh, four total. And what'd you get, Jerry? <laughs> I got a six total. <laughs> you got what? I got a six altogether. Okay. So Zogchen, you get you kind of get the drop in this fight. Um, yeah. You, you kind of see that that like Chiriles is kind of taken aback. Uh, definitely kind of. In, I don't know if he's impressed by it, but he's distracted by the lich's speech. Mm. Um, so what do you uh, what do you want to do? Oh, I'm gonna go for the leg. You're gonna what? Yeah, try to sweep the leg. Okay. Sweep. Well, you're you're about sixty feet out. Oh, okay. Well, I run towards him. All right, you run towards him. <laughs> so you uh, you do a double move. You you run, you belt up to him. You come running up to him hard. Um, did you um, want to do? Uh, yeah, I'll do a double move. Yeah, why not? Okay. Um, and I believe. Don't try to ride me. Just <laughs> oh, <you're gonna> <laughs> yeah. My animal hand. <laughs> yeah, you don't get. Yeah, sorry, you don't. Uh, you don't get key points till second level, huh? No, I don't. I have no. Okay, so you you double move up to. So, uh, Tearless, as you stand there, this this dwarf that's actually shockingly fast for a dwarf. You've never seen a dwarf this fast. Uh, is right next to you. Definitely, you definitely don't have the range to charge them. Like you, usually, you get the drop on these guys, and you you charge them immediately. This guy, though, not not the not the case at all. Oof. Oh, man. Okay. So he's in like arms reach. Yeah, hose reach, arms reach, whatever whatever limb you got, you can. Yeah. Okay. I'll, well, uh, since he popped up so fast, I'll definitely just uh, shove the trident to get create some distance. Okay. Try to right. uh, make an attack roll the trident. Okay, and I'm gonna add the D4. Oh, man. Okay, that's not bad. All right, so 17. Okay, so you, you managed to actually strike them initially. Uh, give me a damage roll now. Okay. Nine. Nine damage, okay. Um, Sorry. <laughs> pokey, pokey. Yeah. You. you Strike him um, quickly, and you hit him pretty damn hard. Um, and as soon as you, in this opening salvo, you're starting to realize, like, I fucked up. Well, that you are mortal. <laughs> yeah, not uh, a one hit point. <laughs> yeah, you got a one hit point. Uh, does um, anything else from Cheerless? Um, oh, after that? Uh, no, no. I'll just sort of uh, back off. You know, I'll kind of okay. move around. And... All right. So you stab him, and then you start backing off from him. Zogchen, as he moves away from you, you see an opportunity to uh, give him a, a swift kick in the leg or his hoof or whatever the hell it is. Yeah. Uh, give me an attack roll. Just one second. Don't worry about it. I missed. Okay. Um, so you, you try to kick him on the way out. 
but then immediately you you uh, recover and you look and you could you could press them if you wanted to. Okay. So do you want to move in on them? Oh yeah. Oh yeah. All right. You go in on them. Uh, give me a, uh, as you kind of charge at them, give them, try to give them a horse punch in the chest <laughs> or something. Yeah. Oh, that's better. Okay. That's 24. 24. Ooh, and that nice. does strike him. Uh, give me damage on that. Uh, D4 plus 3. Sorry, my D4. They're usually in the bottom of your foot, but. <laughs> <laughs> when, when do I become uh, magical and that level uh, 5? You you get you get the enlarge at level three and then you get key points next level, I believe. No, I think like my fifth become magical weapons at like level five or level Oh yeah, yeah. 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 That's right. yeah, that's what I'd uh that would be five. Five damage. Okay. Um Tearless, you get struck in the chest. Uh, you, you can do a second attack there, uh Zogchen, because you have the unarmed strike. Um so oh, yeah, yeah. <laughs> nice. <laughs> That's a ten. Ten to hit. Uh, it is, yeah. This um, Tearless does kind of like manage to uh, brace up and absorb the second blow. Yeah, it's just full flexing. Um, <laughs> Tearless, you're, you're looking at this this dwarf, and he seems to be kind of like you got a really nasty hit on the opening round, Salvo. You're kind of worried about this not being a good show. Mm -hmm. um, you're thinking maybe. The net might be the best bet. To, yeah, to keep, to keep the fight going. Yeah, I'm like maybe, I, yeah, maybe I need to prolong it or uh, just kind of uh, restrain them. So yeah, I'll, I'll go ahead and swing the uh, kind of look at the yeah. crowd. You know, they know it's coming. <laughs> they know it's coming. <laughs> you signal. You give them one of these. Yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> um, uh, yeah. I don't know why on DND Beyond it says. Oh, oh right. It's a plus. Uh, it's a plus three to hit. Yeah, because it's a dex based yeah. attack. Yeah. Okay, nineteen. Nineteen. You throw the net over the dwarf. Um, he then uh, becomes restrained. And uh, what is it? yeah, he's restrained by the net. Um, so you you could certainly, if you wanted to uh, run away from him um, without him, uh, he would have a hard time trying to hit you through the net. If you ran mm -hmm. away, if you wanted to run away and try to set up a, like a, a, a big final charge against him or something. Oh yeah, 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 okay. definitely. That's part of the routine. You know, he's in the okay. net now. Right. Yeah. So, so Zogchen, you're in this net, and it, it feels it's kind of degrading. <laughs> it's a little degrading, um, and uh, uh, but you see uh, Tearless uh, run off uh, from you. Um, uh, you can make an attack roll against him with disadvantage if you want to. Sure. Okay, go for it. Disadvantage. Oh, man. Well, I rolled a natural 20. Nice. I also rolled a 9, so that would be 14. Uh, what would it be? Right. 14. 14. That does strike him. Mm -hmm. Right. How dare you? My. My hind quarter is very tender. So. Uh, all right, that's going to be. Um, I'll, I'll roll the damage for him real quick. Uh, that's four more damage to you, uh, Tearless. Okay. okay. I, yeah, I, I should roll my damage too. My best. I, I got it, man. That's fine. I'll roll for you. Um, so you 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 get the hit, but he he kind of gives you kind of a shot on the way out through the net. Um, it's not very effective, but you do manage to get away and and you you run off the full, uh, your forty feet um, from him with your your full gallop, a pretty good gallop. Um, and you're pretty sure he's not going to be able to catch you. Um, despite how fast he is, he might be able to catch up to you, but you don't think he's going to be able to like pull off a good attack at you um, this round. So, especially being in the net. Mm -hmm. um, so, it is um, Zogchen, uh, or yeah, Zogchen. So you're you're sitting in this net. You, it's it's preventing you from like moving forward and like that. Uh, do you want to try to escape it? I'm assuming. Or oh, yeah. yeah, 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 yeah. Okay. Um, it is, I'm oh, sorry, it's a, um, you got to make a uh, strength? strength check. So it's a, a d20 plus, plus two. 21. 21. So you, you go up and you like rip out of this net like, like it's a, like, 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 <laughs> style. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> go like the crowd. Yeah. 
Yeah. Um, it's my one hit point. I'm like, oh. <laughs> yeah. I, I always love talking about that stuff, man, because like I my 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 best story is uh, when I was in when I was in elementary school. Freaking Mr. T came to my school, That's and, nice. he, and he told us not to do drugs, and I never did. So. <laughs> 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 hey, I'm telling you, man, Mr. Mr. T says don't do drugs, you're, and in, in your face, you're like, yeah. okay. Okay. <laughs> yeah. um, so uh, you um, you go ahead and uh, uh, you rip out of it. You see uh, about 40 feet from you, you see uh, Tearless. Uh, what do you want to do? Do you want to try to move closer to him? Do you want to try to like uh, get a better position? What do you want to do? Um. Norvar, like in my corner, or, or is he just in You the, can see uh, it. He's on, yeah, he's on the corner you came out of, but he's on the other side of the gate. Sweet oh, there because <laughs> I tried. It didn't work, bro. Uh, <laughs> I'm going to try to run over there and get like some kind of pointers as to what to do. Okay, so you go back over the corner. Um, Norvar is right there. And Norvar, you saw your friend get stabbed. He's got like, he's got a pretty big uh, stab wound in his chest from the trident. Um, but he's a tough dude. He can, he, you know, you're pretty sure you can take it to a little bit more. Um, what do you want to tell him? Or do you want to do anything to prep, give, him a, give him a pep or give him some lay on hands or something like that? You know? Uh, yeah. Uh, I, I reach through the bars and, and I touch him. I'm going to okay. do a lay on hands. Five hit points back to, yep. okay. Nice. And, nice. Uh, I'm going to say, <laughs> too late to negotiate. <laughs> don't do that listen centaurs like they're like horses man uh you know hold on i'm thinking the legs are where he, the legs are where he's most vulnerable you had the right idea it just didn't work out but you have the right idea take that fucker out and those legs are going to be way more fragile than anything else so okay. You know, just don't let him kick you. Stay away from the front. Uh, he doesn't have complete motion. You just got to kind of stay in his blind spot. But, I mean, it's going to be tough. So, you know. That sounds like sweep the leg with more steps. Yeah, well, you know, <laughs> kind of get him from behind. But, what, you know, from the side is also a place where he's going to be vulnerable. He's going to kick out the back, and he's going to try and stab you from the front. So, if you go from the side – I mean, you got kind of a, a bit of a gap between his ass and his uh, side. So while you're doing all, while you're getting this pep talk and-, and He's coming, and, by the way. He's right Yeah, there. yeah, exactly. You see behind <laughs> me, Tearless is coming down, charging your direction. Um, okay. Uh, he takes- that was all his spot. He takes a, he's taking a, his full move, but he's actually, uh, yeah. Uh, did you want to try to get to him? Uh, you won't yeah. be able to back in this turn, Michael, though. Uh, if I can move, um, well, okay, so it says for the uh, charge, if I make oh, right. at least 30 feet straight forward and I attempt to hit him with like a javelin on the uh, same turn. Melee, melee weapon attack. Melee, okay, melee on the same weapon. Turn, yeah. Um, um, so, yeah, you'd have to, it's, it's a separate thing, so you can't do it as part of the movement. Gotcha. Um, but that's if you hit him with a melee weapon attack, yeah. Um, you could. Um, yeah, you, you could certainly try to move in cautiously, or you could uh, try to keep your set set the charge the next turn. Yeah, I think I'll set the charge. Okay. So you kind of move in. You kind of start moving a little bit, like about halfway in, kind of like looking at him. Um, you you didn't realize it was in the rules to even talk to somebody during the fight, but here you are. Um, <laughs> so, all right, uh, Zogchen, you look back and you see you see this centaur kind of sizing you up. Yeah. Uh, you yeah. feel a little more confident. Norovar gave you a little bit of confidence. You know, you're realizing friendship is magic and power. Uh, Fuck that guy. <laughs> Fuck that horsey guy. <laughs> I see. I see that he's getting ready to charge, and I'm gonna. I'm gonna go for it too. I'm okay. gonna charge as well. So you, start, you start running in a, a little bit. Uh, kind of, kind of a little more cautiously than he is, but you're kind of setting up. Uh, Tearless, you see him come. You, you see him coming at you. Um, you guys are gonna clap this kind of clash of the titans. Uh, Tearless, you kind of you can get the drop on the charge though. Do uh, you want to charge him? Yeah, yeah. All right, go for it. Uh, go for your uh, uh, charge with the, uh, the trident. Okay. 
Uh, and you're going to have disadvantage on this because uh, okay. Zogchen is kind of like uh, be a little more cautious than he, than, uh, he has okay. been. So I got a 15 and a 23. Mm, very nice. The 15 does hit with the, um, the trident. Okay. So damage? Yeah. All right. Ooh. Nine. Nine. Man. I got max on that six. Killing them. Okay. Well. So you, 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 you go up and you spear him pretty bad and uh, Zogchen is like on the end of your trident. Oh yeah, I'm dead. Well, I'm, I'm not dead. But, but he's on the end of your trident. You, you, as you hold him down with the trident, That's you start rearing up to, do, to, to bring your hooves down on him to like collapse his skull. When as you hoof up, you look up in the air and you see something odd, like very odd. Like, and you kind of, pause like time kind of slows down a little bit for you as you look up you can see that there um the tower this, this in the middle of this pit is this iron tower and this iron is like almost grown out of the ground like it's almost organically grown both going up and going down to the ground so as the pit has descended it seems like the tower has grown itself down in this iron and it, it is um no one's ever attempted to scale the tower because, well, it's, it's made out of iron and it's in the middle of the desert, so it's, you know, kill yourself trying to do it. Even at night, it's still hot. But you notice, um, you've seen this day in, day out all your, all your life. It is starting to lean. Uh -oh. it's starting to, like, the, like, the top of it is this kind of like, it's like a flying saucer. The best way we, we described it earlier is like a, a rotating restaurant. <laughs> oh, yeah. <You> know? <laughs> um, but you kind of start seeing it kind of leaning a little bit. And you can, um, you're making out kind of a glistening, like like a, like a really odd glistening in the middle of the sh of the support sh of this like iron shaft that supports this tower. And mm -hmm. you bring your hooves down right next to the head of Zogchen, who's still barely conscious with a with a trident in his chest. And you look at this thing, and like you're not sure if it's gonna stay up for the next minute. Okay. Shit. Shit. What do you, what do you, uh, Zogchen, you, you're, you have this trite stick on your chest. You see yeah. Tearless, like, was ready for the killing blow and is now, like, you can kind of make out his face now. And he's, like, looking off in the distance, has no attention paid to you whatsoever. So I have a trident in me. Yes. Am I on the ground? Is he like this? Yeah, you're on the or ground. Like, you're, like, he was about to deliver a killing blow to you and you're kind of, like, barely conscious. Um, so you're not really this. What's that? Uh, and you have so like a hoof, you have like a hoof right next to your head. Oh, I'm gonna bite his leg. Okay, <laughs> bite his leg. Um, Charles, you feel like a a light stinginess, um, <laughs> um, and you're you're completely taken aback by like what's going on up there. Yeah. Um, no Ravar, you start picking up the tearless. Like, is no longer like he's not in the fight. Like, he doesn't seem like he's there. Um, from your angle, you start trying to look around, but you're not really sure what he's looking at. Yeah, I'm like, uh... You can't, you can't quite, you, you, you can't quite see. You can try to, like, uh, either jump the gate or try to break open the gate. Um, to how concerned does he look? Like, when, from my angle, he's, what am I seeing? You have seen these fights, and you've seen him fight before, and you know that he could have killed Zogchen at a moment's notice right there on the spot, but suddenly he's just not interested in it at all. Okay, I'm gonna you, hop you even notice he's kind of backing off, looking up in the sky. I just look up, don't see anything, then I'm going to hop the gate. Okay. Um, one of the guards is like, where are you going? You hop the gate pretty easily. Okay. You get out there, and you start, you start kind of like looking over there. I'll make a perception check. Uh, more more. Seventeen. Seventeen. You have there and you look and you're kind of like, what the hell is it looking at? And you've seen the tower day in, day out. And you look up at it and it's not as straight as you remember it. It's starting to kind of lean and you're realizing it, it's leaning towards like, like, like the, the shaft of the ball, that looks really awful on cam. The, the, <laughs> <laughs> the shaft, yeah. The shaft? 
So the the shaft the bottom is so straight, that. but you notice that at the top it's starting to bend. And the shadow is kind of off. And people can kind of tell time by where it, where like the shadow is on, on the pit or whatever it is. But it's like you're starting to look at it, and you start to realize it's a little off. And there's a few people in the audience starting to scream. Yeah. You can see there's like little bits of debris coming off that part where it's starting to bend. I, I kick uh, the murder monk and I go, hey, 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 you know, hey. So you go to his auction, you help, you help him up real quick, pull the trident out, and he's like trying to, well, he's trying to like, he's trying to have like a horse dinner or some shit like he's French. <laughs> yeah, like, no, 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 <laughs> we have a problem. <laughs> and so um, he's, he, he, you pick up, you pull him off and he's like, I don't know, I, I, I got more and more in me. I know you do, but look. Point up, uh, Zog Chen, uh, through the through the blood and and, and the anger, uh, make a perception check with disadvantage. My little murder monk. <laughs> oh, but disadvantage is a six. Six. You you you're like you know you don't see shit. Like it's it's hard to see with all the blood and everything, um, in your uh, in your guys' eyes. So. It's me. It's me, you son of a bitch. This is this is your friend. <laughs> Make up the line. Where, where okay, I, I think we need to get out of there. <laughs> so, <laughs> is it bending towards us? Which way is it bending? Uh, it is. It is starting to lean towards where you guys are. Oh shit! Okay. Yeah. Uh, I'm. I'm. While I'm screaming at the dwarf, trying to get him to calm down. I look at the centaur and I was like, Sir Galaxalot, we gotta get the fuck out of here. <laughs> so would I know where an exit would be? Like where I end um, like you, since you, I'm kind you of see a... there's there is an exit where he jumped the fence and there's an exit you, you, you came through on the opposite side of the of the place. Um you're not sure how much like support or cover those those places would give you from this thing falling. Right. So um, so I would say uh would I know which which is the best option, the, the gate that um, he jumped? You'd probably say the way that you came through. Okay. Um, okay, well, I'll turn to them and just say, um, you know, I know a way, uh, you know, hop on or follow me. I know a way out. Here, follow gotta... me. <laughs> um, by the way, I posted in the chat, I posted a link. If you guys want to see what Michael's miniature is going to look like, that's what it's going to look like. Oh, it's nice. The, uh, it's, it's pretty badass, dude. Like, Centaur Barbarian, I, I found a pretty good match. Oh, oh, fuck, oh yeah, yeah, nice. Yeah, that's pretty savage looking. Like, like um, too many people trying to make centaurs look, uh, you know, eloquent. Yeah. Uh, and I'm like, nah, dude. I want, I want brutal, I want brutal centaur. <laughs> like, I was gonna say, if he's still on the trident, I would just start like trotting over to the, uh, galloping um, to the exit with him connected. Oh, with, oh, <laughs> drag him. Yeah. yeah. Okay. Like a whole no, I'm not trying to. <laughs> um, Norabar kind of picks him up and starts hobbling with you. Uh, you clearly outrace them, uh, Tyrolis, but you do manage to like, get to the gate, um, bring your host to the gate. You manage to open it up pretty quickly um, and go on in through. You see the crowd start to kind of panic and start to realize what's going on. People are like, freaking out. Um, you do see on the way out, though, you see um, uh, Jarzok stand up and look up at the tower. And him and some of the other wizards are kind of like talking, like kind of talking about. They seem to be taking their time a little bit while everyone else is panicking. The guards are like up and around, and right any there. any of the crowd that comes near these guys, the guards just slay. They don't mm -hmm. even let them get close to them. Zarzok, um, for what you can guess, is rolling his eyes at best. Seems to like uh, do some magic, and him and all the wizards immediately teleport out of there, leaving the guards. Mm -hmm. That's okay, right. well, uh, I'll lead these guys into the court, my like chambers. Some of the guards in the chambers are like, uh, like trying to stop you. Yeah, um, so you, you come up past uh, a pair of these guards, um, and they're like, tearless, no, they're all tearless, halt. Like they're telling you to stop. And every and they've told you this kind of stuff before, but you've never been in this kind of dire circumstances. No, yeah. are, you're standing there too. Um, well, I'm trying to drag the dwarf. I'm yeah, trying you're, to get you're, carrying, you're carrying a dwarf in front. Bring him along. Um, yeah. And scream at him like, it's me, you son of a bitch. We have to go. <laughs> uh, make a, make a, uh, do you want to do intimidation? Well, no, you do intimidation, Norvar. You're pretty good. I'm not trying to scare uh, me. 
Yeah, you uh, you sound scary. You're trying to intimidate the guards. I, I sound scary, but I think this would be more persuasive. I'm trying to get through to him. I'm not trying to be like, okay, bitch. Go for it. I'm trying to be like, <laughs> son of a bitch, stop trying to hit me. <laughs> well, I, 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 feel like, I feel like saying we're all going to die is, is intimidation. But, um, <laughs> uh, um, oh, okay, we'll go with dealer's choice. Persuasion. Even though you're better in intimidation. <laughs> uh, let's see. Uh... Seventeen. Seventeen. They're they're kind of like they kind of give you. I'm like, yeah, sure. And they, they hear the noise coming from outside, and through the gates that you guys just came through, you see several of the um, of your other fellow uh, prisoners coming through that way, trying to charge through. Yeah. The panic is like real. I rush them quickly if I can to the chambers. You know, kind okay. of like so to have them. You go into your chambers. Um, there is a door. Uh, Norovar and Zogchan both come through. Do you want to either keep the door open or, or do you want to, um, and you see the guards are getting ready to try to like prevent these people from rushing through. What do you I'll use to? my back legs and shut that shit. Okay. You kick the doors closed. <laughs> yeah. Uh, yeah. Uh, get out of here. You have, you have Zogchen who's like fairly wounded. You have Norovar, who's this, this other guy who looks like he's his corner yeah. man. Is he alive? You know, and I alive. just look he's, for. Zogchen is barely standing up on his own power. Okay. Yeah, I look kind of, you. I kind of look around. We were fighting. We're in a battle, and I'll just sort of like look for uh, some healing or bandages or something. There, there's like bandages and stuff like that. Yeah, yeah sure, for, for sure. I, uh, I have a medic skill. Okay. Uh, no of our. Yeah, there's uh, no real time. This thing's falling. Like, yeah. Can anybody see anything? I don't have time to wrap them. We got to get out of here. The tower, the yeah, the disc tower was crumbling. We we have to leave. Is your like is uh is your monk friend uh, able to uh? Walk out of here. I'll make he, sure that he does. I'll grab bandages and stuff to help him yeah. after, but we don't have time to fucking heal him. Uh, yeah. you, you, uh, Dominic, you have a. Um, I'll put on your. I'll put on your sheet for your watch here, real quick. That's why I like D and D Beyond. I can. I can just. Yeah. That's like my favorite thing about D and D Beyond is like if like someone steals something from a character, I can just make it happen, and they don't know about it. Nice. Because uh, <laughs> that's how that's how that's how theft usually works. So you don't realize your wallet's gone until until you need it. You know. <laughs> yeah, but I know we don't have equipment. Like, no, you, know, you don't. But um, the um, what was it? Uh, I'll say, uh, is your friend thirsty? He, he sure took a piss out there. Uh -huh. <laughs> <laughs> I get a pitcher of water. And, <laughs> yeah, that's okay. cute. I do love jokes, but we could all die together <laughs> while we so, die carrying um, under metal. You, you do manage <laughs> to get a healer's, uh, a single use of a healer's kit. Okay. So you have. Well, you have I'll do that as soon as we get out of the way of the tower that's falling. I know it's a slow fall, but I don't want to sit here doing it like. I look at him and I was like, we're going to have to keep, and I, I try to tell the dwarf, it's like, I will take care of you. We have to get moving. How do we get out of here? Like anywhere, but under that. <laughs> Is there an, like another chamber door out of? Like, yeah, there, there's a few yeah. chamber doors to uh, going out the back and such like that. Um, this is kind of more of a staging area. Um, and so you How much of, is he struggling walking? I'm sorry to interrupt. How much oh, is the dwarf? Zogchen, Zogchen, he, he, He's not going to be able to, if you left him by himself, he'd move at half rate. But if you wanted to like um, carry him, he could go pretty, he, he, if you're helping him, like give him like, you know, kind of like carry, he, he can yeah. go pretty fast. I'll, I'll be guiding him as I grab the med kit and like, I'll be guiding him out towards the door. Right. So you got this, you got this like bandages in one hand, you got him in the other hand. You're bringing yeah, him. And I'm like, go lead us. Let's get out of here. We got to um, go. And uh, no, you, you do realize, uh, I'm going to say too, you do have a dagger. Uh, you have one of Zogchen's uh, daggers that he's cashed up. Groovy. So you do have a, you do have a, a, a weapon on you uh, of some sort. Um, and, I pull it out and I stick it in a belt, but I like. Yeah, you, know, you have it. It's well hidden. Um, <laughs> it's it's a it's a stealth check in order to hide the weapon. Mm -hmm. um, but uh, you're, you you, have, you do have a weapon. You do have it hidden right now. So you kind of keep on going with them. You guys go through these chambers, and um, you. Uh, you get out the back of the arena, and you can see this thing is now coming. Um, where where initially you saw kind of like a like a, a terrace, you saw like a dent in it. It's now like a whole angle, like it's like someone chopping down a tree. And the things at like well over a forty five degree angle, like getting ready to start oh, almost yeah. hitting the ground. Um, you can in, you can hear the metal like bending and even melting under its own pressure at this point. Um, Everybody, including Zogchen, make a perception check if you're trying to look at this thing. 
17. 17, very nice. What is it? Perception check? Perception, please. Goes. I got a 10. 10? 21. 21, okay. Norovar and Zogtan, as you guys are staring at this thing, uh, Tyrlis can't take his eyes off this thing. Like, you're just, like, you've, you've seen this thing day in, day out. Um, it's it's set your time. It, it's, it's a cornerstone of your life, but it's just, it's whatever is going on, it's really bad. The other two of you, though, you guys both look up, and you can kind of see this debris kind of coming off of it, and you, you look off away from it, and you, you're starting to see there's like a distortion in the air. You, you can't yeah. really make out a color, but there's some sort of distortion in the air, like, you know, it's like heat waves kind of coming off a, off a, um, a road. And it looks like you swear there's like a beam coming off of the middle of the air, way off the distance, right into this thing, just holding down on it from somewhere out, out in the distance. Well, that's fucked. Um, okay. So this, your uh, your impression, both of yours impression out of this is like whoever these, whoever um, that this this uh, outpost of Zash's that this place is under attack. Right, it's no, being it's being taken out. Evident. W are we not under it right now, or are we? Still um, it, it's you wouldn't be under it directly, but the debris that it would kick up would certainly potentially hurt you. Okay, so we're not. Dust. So we look up long enough to take this in, and then I'm like, like, um, what's his name? Uh, Str Strider. Uh, Tor Oh, Trouncer. 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 Motherfucker. Let's get... We gotta go. Like, what, you know this? You know this place better than anybody. Let's get the fuck out of here. That thing's gonna go... We need to get as far away from this as possible. So I'm gonna continue to drag the door, but I'm just like, let's go, guys. The tier list, so you think into, like, a safe spot where, like, you might go, like, sort of, like survive this. Mm -hmm. It's sadly enough would be one of the one of the um, the working minds. Okay. However, well, this is something that you have avoided all your life. Um, right. they are, you know that for you, uh, this would in, if it would be a little claustrophobic for you. I know a place, um, uh, a dark place that I'd, I'd rather not go, but it's probably the one place that we could be safe. So I'll lead you there, down to the mines. Yeah, when you say you'd rather not go, I point at the tower again and go. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> you have a point. All right. Thank you. All right. So I, I grab some hay and I grab another net because he ruined my best net. <laughs> <laughs> He's rude like that. Get used to it. Yeah, yeah. Right. So you, yeah, and you, I make my way. You guys, you guys start making your way off of this. Um, I'd like a, um, a constitution saving throw from everybody. Shit. Yeah. Okay. You guys should be pretty good at this. Thirteen. All right. Twelve. Seven, Seventeen. Seventeen. Okay. Um, you guys all manage like to start. You start running for your lives. Um, you can you you notice too that the shadow of this thing is starting to shift, and you guys are now in the shade of it. Uh oh, that's not good, guys. Wait, good. I mean we're under it. Uh, no, the sun is coming off the back because it, because it, it's like a disc at the top. Right, that's what. So I the, the sun's kitting it. Like you guys are still close to it, but you're not under it. Does that make sense? Yes. Like, it casts a pretty long shadow. Okay. Um. And uh, it's shading parts of the pit that have never been shaded. Run! So you start running. Uh, make another constitution check. check. Okay. Or saving throw, excuse me. Saving throw. Ten. Ooh. Ten? 18. We're doing saving throw, right? Yes, please. Ten. 24. Jeez. Show off. I got a natural 20. <laughs> um, Norvar, you, you're carrying Zogchen, and you, you start... <laughs> um, Feel a little bit uh, run down. You get a level of exhaustion. Shit. I, um, right. I sure? turn to him like, "Do you need to throw your friend on my back?" Like, as an unwilling. <laughs> but I like can yes. see that they're slowing down. Okay. That would be wonderful. Right. Yes, please. Zogchen, whether or not you will it, you are now thrown over your opponent. <laughs> uh, I, I lift him up and I go, "Hang on, and just hang on." Zogchen starts trying to kitty punch him. He's like, oh. <laughs> I just I lift my tail and just shit. Just take yeah, it. Okay. <laughs> um, so you you keep on uh, you keep on advancing uh, and eventually kind of get to this cave. Um, you look out and you hear the thing crashing into the arena. 
Um, you see rubble, dust clouds coming through. Um, the, the cave you're in, this mining cave you're in is going to be completely engulfed with dust shortly as it, as it kind of bellows through in all directions. Um, it's a question too of like how to escape. That is, will there be rubble? You're guessing, there probably will be. Yeah, and how deep do we continue to go, you, right? How yeah. do you guys try to go deeper? Do you guys try to dig your way we out? We go as far as we can to get out of this, because this is- but you guys, Yeah, you guys keep on running deeper into the cave. That's like, a question of, do you try to go through the cave to get out and then like try to dig your way up? Or do you try to go back out the way it is? At this point, it's really unclear. Mm -hmm. um, We're going to need a, uh, well, I, I would think that we would get, we would continue to run and move until the rumbling stopped. Yeah. And there wasn't any dust hitting. At least me, I'd be like, go, yeah. go, 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 yeah. until everything stopped. And then once it settles, we can kind of like see, do we, you know, pull rocks out. I'd probably want to work on him real fast mm -hmm. and stabilize you, him. And you, then you guys run for about 10 minutes or yeah. about, take, take a pretty, as about as fast as you can. Uh, Tearless, it's actually kind of hard for you to maneuver in here. Yeah. Um, you're slowed down substantially while you're going through this cave, but you do kind of manage to like to squeeze through, uh, going through a straight shot, uh, having to put your head, your whole, uh, well, not your, I guess, I guess you wouldn't have to like duck and be kind of leaning. Mm -hmm. <laughs> you bow your way through the freaking cave. <laughs> <laughs> oh, yeah. I don't know how to describe that. Um, yeah. <laughs> I'm a centaur for a uh, <laughs> Or I lean all the way back, you know. Like. That's a good question. Good, good philosophical question. How do how do centaurs like, what, is it, do they lean when they have to go forward or do they bow? What do you, what call, do you call it? All right. Anyways, so you, you kind of you nudge your way through. You guys go on for about 10 minutes. The rumbling stops. Um, the cave is completely dusted over. Um, it starts to settle a little bit. Norvar, you take up the healing kit. You manage to actually stabilize uh, Zog Chen's like wounds. Mm -hmm. um, he's able to kind of walk. You kind of you kind of um, uh, wrap up his wounds and you, you uh, wrap up his ribs. Um, Zog Chen, you're kind of coming to it. Uh, cough from getting out of it. Uh, Do you want me to roll to see how many hit points I restore him as an action? Uh, I believe because I have I'm a healer. Oh, you have healer. Yeah, go for it. Yeah. So yeah, uh, yeah, D6 plus four hit points. Nice. 10, buddy. 10. Oh. So yeah, you get Zogchen, you wrap up Zogchen pretty well. Um, he's feeling pretty good, um, a, a lot better than he did a second ago. You, you, you kind of get all the wounds back together. Um, the dust starts to settle down. You start to kind of see what's going on around you. Zogchen, you're starting to get kind of flashes of being back home um, in the darkness. Uh -huh. Uh, your your caves are a lot better. Uh, where you guys were from is a lot better hewn than this. This kind of shit job. Uh, <laughs> I look at Tyrellius, uh, uh, tireless, tireless, and I might like, ask him if he if he's wounded anywhere if he needs help. And Just I, pride. I, yeah, yeah, I'm a bit wounded from your friend. Um, yeah. uh, I'll work on him too. Uh, you're out of healing kit uses. Um. It uses up a charge every time you use one. You have, I gave you the one charge because of the uh, right, right. So I'm like, I'll be fine, I'll be, I'll be fine. fine. He looks like he's, he's not in bad shape, yeah. So, yeah. You know, well, when I if I can get as soon as I can, I can help you. Uh, I'll, I'll figure out a way. You know, I can pull it out of my ass. So, <laughs> um, so at this juncture, you guys can like either take a breather or start trying to figure out a way out of here. Um, I figure out a way out of here. Yeah, I want to see if there's a way to like, I mean, if I'm strong enough to move any large pieces or if we have rope to tie towards me where I can So, so in, in that case, that means you would be wanting to go back towards the entrance of the cave. Yeah, yeah, just to see. Yeah, I want to see what the entrance looks like. Okay. okay. A little bit, just to see if how, how um, buried in we are. Okay. All right. Well, in that case, I think we'll pick it up on the next one then. Cool. We'll leave, Man, it on, was... we'll leave it on the, the cave exit. So that was a badass one. That was really was fun. Okay? Yeah. Yeah, I, yeah, that was awesome. Yeah, I wanna it's it's kind of setting up something. What what the question now is what's going on outside and who did the thing. Um because as far as you guys know, there is no Zash has no like enemy that can th that's ever threatened him. So this is an interesting question yeah. of yeah. who's threatening him. I mean, I've threatened him, but I mean I just can't what's that? I threatened him. I just can't do anything about it. <laughs> <laughs> okay. no, uh, yeah, a real okay. threat. A real threat. Like like a, a credible threat. We'll say yeah, it's just hurtful, John. Oh, is that? Hurtful? <laughs> I'm, just, I'm just I'm just digging in there. 
No, but uh, okay, that was awesome. That was really yeah, fun. that was fun. Oh man, yeah, I'll, I'll um, uh, I'm trying to set up a scenario to you where I can write back in uh, Andrea for next week, so that'll be fun. But because um, she's a lot of fun, actually, her her career is freaking weird. Um, yeah, <laughs> but uh, it's a lot of fun. So I would think that my character and uh, more more barn got to be friends too. Like I. Oh yeah, no, you guys you already kind of. She drew on me the first time we met. That's, she drew on you. That's right. Yeah, she drew on you. I don't know where it is now. It's probably buried under a lot of metal. Cool, man. And I definitely feel like Dog Chen and I have a weird bond now, having fought each other, you know, and hey. then somehow yeah. the opportunity taking each other. No, it's, it's a, it worked out really good. But it's a, it's a professional courtesy. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> I just think you guys are assholes. <laughs> Fair. I'll finish stomping on your head later. So, um, and in the meantime, too, let me also uh, grant you guys all second level. Okay. Uh, do you, uh, oh. do you, yeah. So, um, 